Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HECRAS, and in today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about geometric data, specifically entering and editing bridge data. This is for 1D flow. All right, so uh, what I have on the screen here is a project that I already have started. It's a very simple river system that goes from upstream to downstream with four different cross sections every 100 feet of stationing. Once all the required uh, river schematic and cross sections have been added to your river system, the modeler can then add 1D bridges. And that's what I'll be doing in this lesson. So let's go ahead and build a bridge. The user's manual shows this diagram right here, which is pretty helpful, I think. Imagine the flow the flowing downward on the page. So it flows in from the top. This is a plan view, by the way. So we have the contraction reach, which occurs upstream of the bridge cross section or you could think of this as a culvert cross section as well and then after that cross section we have an expansion reach right here the length of the contraction reach is l sub c the length of the expansion reach is l sub e and we also have this ratio this uh, contraction ratio cr and expansion ratio er which is just that number uh, as a ratio of one to demonstrate what that angle would be and what that angle is, you see there's four different cross sections in this diagram. Number one, which is downstream. Number two, which is just downstream of the bridge. Uh, cross section three, which is just upstream of the bridge. And then cross section four, which is sufficiently far enough upstream from three. The definition says that uh, cross section four here should be located upstream where the flow lines are approximately parallel and the cross section is fully effective. And then cross section one down here at the bottom is located sufficiently far downstream from the structure so that the flow is not affected by the structure. And then cross sections two and three right here should be located a short distance uh, upstream and downstream of the bridge or culvert and should be more than a foot away of the upstream or downstream face of the structure. But it should be located far enough upstream or downstream of the, of the structure for a certain amount of contraction or expansion to occur. Okay, so I only bring that up because if I go over to HECRAS, what I'm going to do is put a bridge right here between station the cross section of station 100 and 200. Therefore, I will have the four required cross sections of one, two, three, and four, which would be uh, consistent with one, two, three, and four. Okay, back to HECRAS. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because I'm going to be putting the bridge in right here. Let's click the bridge over icon. This is the interface that I'm going to be talking about most for this lesson, specifically the road deckway here, sloping abutment, bridge modeling approach, and then this last one, bridge design. So the first button here is, is the deck slash roadway. Before we click that, I need to actually make sure I'm in the right river reach. Now, that's pretty obvious with such a simple river system. Select your river, select your reach. It's the only one for me to select. And then to add a bridge or culvert, I'll go up to the options menu add a bridge or culvert. Now, just like cross-section, it's asking me for what the station is going to be. And what I'm going to type in here is 170. So that refers to the stationing upstream of the downstream most cross-section. Okay. And then now that I have that typed in, I already have a bridge that's been created for me. Here we have the upstream location and the downstream location. These are cross-sections. Now I can go ahead and use these buttons on the left panel to start making edits to my bridge. So I'm going to start by clicking on deck slash roadway right here. This editor allows the user to define the area that will be blocked out due to the bridge deck. This is not referring to abutments and it's not referring to piers. It's just the bridge deck alone. So for a distance right here, I'm going to say 30 feet. This is in units of feet, even though it doesn't say that I'm in the uh, English unit system for this model. This distance refers to the distance between the upstream side of the bridge deck and the cross section immediately upstream of the bridge deck. Okay, that'll be a little more clear when I explain width. For width, I'm going to say 40 feet. And then this is in units of feet. And this refers to the width of the bridge deck along the stream. So when I typed in 170 as my stationing, that would be uh, for the downstream face of the bridge, I believe. So if it's 170, then another 40 feet of width, that means the upstream base of the bridge would be at station 130. The table of data right here allows the user to define the geometry of the bridge deck. 
So I'm going to go ahead and type in some numbers I have here. It's divided up into an upstream end and a downstream end. I'm going to make them identical, which is not too uncommon because there is a button right here that says copy upstream to downstream. So um, if I just type in some numbers here. Yeah, I have my numbers typed in up here for the upstream end. Here are my stations. They range from 0 up to 100, which is consistent with 0 here up to 100. And then the high chord of the bridge is a constant 108 feet, so that's plenty high. And then the low chord is going to change from uh, 50, and it's going to go up to 100, and then back down to 50. So once I go ahead and click OK, you'll see what that looks like. And then we'll copy it to the downstream and then see what that looks like. So all I need to do here is click OK, I believe. OK. So here in the upstream cross section of the bridge, you now see the bridge deck is in place. And if I scroll up a little bit, I'm going to try to um, expand the view. What I'm trying to do in this mini map is expand the view so I can see the entire. <laughs> cross section in one view. Okay, that's the best I can do. But you can see how we, we go from zero to 100. And now the bridge deck now um, blocks out part of uh, what would be a flow passageway. This is still the main channel. This is still left over bank and right over bank. The downstream end needs to have the same data or similar data. So I'm going to go back to my deck slash roadway button. And then very quickly and easily click this copy to downstream end, click OK. And now we have a identical bridge deck that displays our downstream cross section here. So that looks good. Also in that deck slash roadway button, there's a few other things. Clearing would clear all the data. I don't want to do that. If I want to insert a row, I can uh, click insert row. That will do that. You can delete the row. We already saw copy upstream to downstream. There's an upstream embankment um, at side slope. I'm going to make that two for both upstream and downstream ends. This value was only used under, under certain energy calculations. More on that in the user's manual if you're interested. After that, we have weir data. So we have max submergence, min weir flow elevation, and then the weir crest shape. For max submergence, I'll just use the default of 0 0.98 that it started me with. This is the maximum allowable submergence ratio that can occur during weir flow calculations over the bridge deck. If this ratio is exceeded, then the program automatically switches to energy-based calculations rather than pressure and weir flow. Broad crest and spillway, I'll go ahead and use that. And then for the minimum weir flow elevation, I'm going to use the elevation of 108 feet. This field is used to set the minimum elevation for which weir flow will begin to be evaluated. If the field is left blank, then the elevation that triggers the weir flow is based on the lowest high chord elevation of on the upstream side of the bridge deck. So that would be basically the minimum of this column here, which is 108 anyway. The weir flow is based on elevation of the energy grade line and not the water surface. So I'll click OK and we're good with that. A couple buttons down is this sloping abutment button. And this would allow the user to add sloping abutments. So I'll go ahead and click that. Whenever bridge abutments are protruding towards the main channel, it will be necessary to block out additional area that cannot be accounted for by the bridge deck roadway editor. So that's where the abutment editor comes in place. And I think it'd actually be easier for me to just type some numbers in, click OK, and we can see what that looks like in the diagram. Okay, I've got a few numbers typed in right here with stationing and elevation. And what I hope happens, well, it'll block out a little bit of a sloped area here on the left side and then another sloped area adjacent, uh, sort of a parallel to it, a mirror image of, on the right side. So if I click OK, OK, that didn't seem to work. Actually, I think I have to just, oh, there we go. Sometimes I click OK and then I need to like update this window and I can do that just by kind of clicking on the window and moving it. But this is that sloped abutment right here. So it removes a little bit more area from the cross section, but sometimes bridges are just built that way to have a little bit more stability. If the bridge has vertical wall abutments, then no sloping abutments are necessary. If I go back into the sloping abutments editor, we could add multiple abutments. In fact, I sort of did two abutments in one, but I could have done two separate abutments. And there's ways to copy, add, and delete abutments as well as well as rows and insert rows. So we've seen these tools already before. One more thing I need to do before moving on is to copy the upstream data to the downstream data and then click OK. And it looks like the, the diagram updated automatically for me that this time, so that's good. Okay, next up is peer, peer data. Let me go ahead and click the, to open up the peer editor. The bridge peer editor is used to describe any peers that exist in the bridge opening. 
all peers that must be entered through the peer editor. They should not be included as part of the ground or bridge deck. If I look at my diagram, what I'm going to do is put a peer right here and then right here in the center and then one more here on the right over bank. So left over bank, center channel, and then right over bank for both upstream and downstream. So I'm going to have three separate peers before I'm done here. Okay, so it automatically starts me off with one. I don't have to click add. It assumes that I'm going to add one by just opening this dialog at all. And let's go ahead and add some data. And I think once I do, it'll be a little bit more clear and also easier for me to explain. So the first one I'm going to put right here in the left over bank. I'm going to set a center line location of 26 for both upstream and downstream. So 26 is where it'll be centered, which is right about here. And then the peer width I'll say is three feet. I'll say zero and then three feet. And oops, okay, hold on. It went to downstream. Three feet and then and then 100. Okay, there we go. A little clumsy there. So if elevation goes below the ground level or above the bridge deck, I believe that just gets cropped off and ignored by the compute. But uh, let me go ahead and let's see, click OK to that. And then let me just update this. OK, cool. So what we have is a single peer here on the left over bank. I'm going to open up the peer again. And we have that one peer waiting for us. I'm going to copy to downstream and then click OK. OK, so we have it down here as well. Let's go ahead and add two more peers. So here it's it already has one peer so i'm going to copy that peer and it started me off with all the same data which is pretty helpful i guess i will make the second one in the exact middle so i'll say 50 is my stationing okay and then for the data down here i will say it's still three feet wide yeah i guess all this data is still the same so i can just leave that as it is it's going to be from zero up to 100 feet that's plenty and then click okay Okay, we got the second peer in place. Let's do one more peer here. So click the peer button. We have peer one and peer two. I'll go ahead and click copy once again. We're on to peer three here. And then I'll set the center line station upstream and downstream to be 74. And I believe all the other information is correct. So there's the right overbank peer for what is now a pretty good looking bridge, right? We've got our bridge deck, we've got the sloping abutments, and then we have a few peers. If I click on peer one more time, you can see we have uh, this other option for debris. So for some reason, if you happen to have debris that's getting caught on the peer itself, you can specify, uh, say, peer number two has debris and it's two feet wide by three feet high. And then you can click OK, and then that would be um, included in the calculations. There's also a button here to say like all the peers have debris or all the peers don't have debris. I'm not going to do that, but um, I'm just going to turn them off. Okay, so we are good there. The next button down in the bridge culvert editor is this bridge modeling approach. This editor allows the modeler to define how the bridge will be modeled and to enter any necessary parameter data for both the low flow and high flow calculations. So as you see here, we have a frame for low flow method and then below that for high flow method. Low flow method is our normal flow. Our methods to select here are either energy, which is sort of the standard method. There's also a, a momentum option, Yarnell, and then WS Pro method. So if you're curious about what these different methods are and how they're used, there is a button right here. If you click it, it opens up to a web page into the user's manual or the, um, the reference manual, and it gives you a lot more information. That's a little bit beyond the scope of what I want to talk about in this lesson, though. But I will mention that if you select on momentum or Yarnell methods, the user must enter a value for the peer loss coefficients over here that correspond to that method. If the WS Pro method is selected, which is this last one right here, then you need to click this WS Pro variables button and then fill out the necessary parameter values in this dialog box. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. Um, let's just uh, set it back to what it was. As for high flow right here, our options are energy only or pressure and or weir. High flow is for abnormally high flows at or above the maximum low cord elevation. So for high flow method, the modeler can choose between any, either of these options. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close that just so you know that that's an option. The last button I want to talk about in this lesson is the bridge design right here. One way to sort of summarize and build a bridge a lot quicker than what we did is to just quick click this bridge design button. And what we have is a summary of a lot of the steps that we already did into one single dialogue box.
It's sort of an abbreviated way to build a bridge. Here we have the road and deckway information. And uh, here's the elevation of the high chord, elevation of the low chord. Here's where you can add piers and so on. So it's not quite as detailed, but it's a quick way to add a bridge. So I welcome you to check out that method as well. All right. All right. Well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about building a bridge in 1D flow in HECRAS. We built a bridge, the bridge deck, the sloping abutments, added piers, and then talked about some of the bridge modeling approaches and bridge design.